die yet. Hello, I'm the Asian film fanatic. This is my review of the Japanese movie Rashomon. A man, a woman, a bandit, a witness, murder, suicide, violation, theft. I can attest these crimes took place. I've seen them with my own eyes. And yet, it makes no sense. Four testimonies, four conflicting perspectives. Who's lying and who's telling the truth? The movie Rashomon is famous for its depiction of multifaceted and incongruous viewpoints of the same event. Over this, a woodcutter, a priest, and a commoner ruminate over the confusion of what actually happened. The word Rashomon is based on the Japanese kanji combination Rajo Ma. Rajo refers to the outer areas of a castle, and Ma translates to gate. This historically links to a city gate in Kyoto that was infamous for its seedy and dilapidated state. It was a dismal place of despair where shady individuals abandoned corpses and unwanted babies. Beneath this dank setting on a cloudy rain-soaked day, we examine the scenes that leave us questioning the integrity of the human soul. The film is directed by the great Akira Kurosawa, and it's one of his best. It's very well directed. Despite being an homage to silent film, many visuals were shot in a style that's ahead of its time. He also co-wrote the screenplay with first-time screenwriter Shinobu Hashimoto, who would later become a frequent collaborator with Kurosawa. The script is based on a combination of two separate short stories by Rinosuke Okutagawa. The first is titled In a Grove, a story of inconsistent testimonies. The second is titled Rashomon, a dark story justifying immorality for survival's sake. The music is composed by another common collaborator, Fumio Hayasaka. His brooding and seductive score matches the mood and atmosphere well enough for the time. The woodcutter and the priest are played by Takeshi Shimura and Minoru Chiaki. They view the incident through a seemingly honest and moral lens. Kichijiru Ueda plays a streetwise commoner who holds a cynical point of view. In a rather over-the-top fashion, the great Toshiro Mifune plays Tajimaru the Bandit with a movie-stealing performance you could either love or hate. <laughs> Masayuki Mori plays the traveling samurai, a very restrained and subtle role. The wife is played by the mesmerizing Machiko Kyo. Her acting can reach exaggerated heights as well. But she's a bit more grounded and balanced than Mifune. I thought she did a great job in the role. Captivating, entrancing, hypnotizing. Rashomon is a movie that possesses you with mystery, suspense, intrigue. Along with its moral philosophical musings, it's a movie that makes you think. There's a lot to like here. The writing and direction are outstanding. The music is a good fit, ominous, evocative, ethereal, and seductive. The acting can be a mixed bag if you don't like Mifune's wild antics, but the emotions and characters leap off the screen. The winner of an honorary Academy Award, The Golden Lion, and numerous more, Rashomon's international impact has left a long legacy of influence and appreciation for Japanese film. In my opinion, its praise and reputation are well deserved as one of the greats, not just for Asian movies, but for cinematic history. Now I'm going to go over the entire movie with spoilers. At the beginning, the woodcutter reiterates his testimony for the priest and commoner. Walking through the forest, he notices only circumstantial evidence. The woman's hat, a samurai's hat, a rope, an amulet case, and a body. He denies finding a sword or anything like that. The priest's testimony is a brief pre-encounter showing a happy husband and could have been left on the cutting room floor. The same goes for the policeman's false capture story. Kind of insignificant. The only thing I gained from that is Tajimaru catching his lie. In Tajimaru's testimony, he first sees the samurai and his wife passing by. Smitten by the woman's beauty, he decides to trick the man 
promising a hidden cachet of cheap swords and mirrors. After tying him up, Tajimaro proudly shows the wife her helpless husband. In retaliation, the woman attacks Tajimaro with a dagger but fails, succumbing to the bandit's forceful kiss. After struggle turns to embrace, she demands only one must live, him or her husband. A lively sword fight follows, but in the end, the samurai is slain by the bandit's sword. Back at the courthouse, Tajimaro compliments the samurai's ability. With the woman gone, the remaining consolation is the samurai's sword, which was sold for liquor. The woman's dagger gets overlooked. <laughs> this is a very machismistic account. Mifune's a madman! Returning to Rashomon, the disillusioned woodcutter calls the bandit and woman liars. The cynical commoner says it's human to lie, and the empathetic priest faults human frailty. Telling her side of the story, the woman picks up right after being forced to yield to the bandit. But it's interesting how insignificant Tajimaru is in this version. He just laughs at them and runs away. Fraught with conflicting and complex emotions, the wife focuses on her husband's icy, hateful gaze. Unable to bear his scorn, she grabs her dagger and begs to be killed. When his glaring continues, her fatalism turns. Dagger in hand, she blacks out the moment she reaches her husband. Waking up, she's shocked to see the dagger in her husband's chest. Later, she says to have thrown herself into a pond, yet failed in multiple suicide attempts. I love the shots with her hands over her face and swaying with the dagger. The swaying reminds me of the swaying leaves in the samurai's testimony. Very dramatic and hypnotic. The three at Rashomon reflect again, echoing previous sentiments of confusion, self-deception, and doubts on morality. The samurai's testimony is channeled through a medium. Not only did his wife agree to go wherever the bandit wanted, but demanded her husband be killed. Surprised by this, Tajimaro throws the woman down and asks the samurai to kill or let her go. Before he could answer, she escapes. Unable to catch her, Tajimaro frees him and leaves. Filled with sorrow, the samurai commits suicide. Curiously, before slipping into darkness, he feels someone pulling the dagger from his chest. While not exactly ritual harakiri, and not even historically standardized during this time period, to the modern Japanese, suicide still symbolized an act of preserving moral responsibility and honor. I also thought it was interesting that his words and expressions were a lot more intense and unrestrained through his medium than in all the flashbacks, including his own. Insisting the samurai died by the sword and not the dagger, the woodcutter retells his testimony as a first-hand witness. In this version, Tajimaro begs the woman to be his wife, but she cuts her husband free, wanting them to settle it like men. After they both refuse to fight, she shames the bandit and the samurai against each other into a nervous duel. I love Machiko Kyo's performance in this. In the end, Tajimaru kills the man with his blade. The wife runs away, leaving Tajimaru with nothing but the samurai's sword. Returning to the gate of Rashomon, the cynical commoner doubts the woodcutter's story. But the priest still wants to believe in men. Amidst their debate, they hear a baby's cry. The commoner takes from the baby, justifying it by saying the parents and everyone in the world are selfish and evil. As the priest holds the baby, the woodcutter disagrees, pointing out the amulet left behind to protect it. After a brief tussle, the commoner calls out the woodcutter's hypocrisy. He stole the dagger. The woodcutter recoils in guilt, and the commoner leaves. The rain stops. Dejected, the woodcutter gestures to care for the baby. The priest shirks before apologizing. Handing over the baby, the priest thanks him, restoring his faith in mankind.
By the end of Rashomon, we leave with a regained sense of redemption. Yet many questions still remain. What actually happened? How did the samurai die? Murder? Suicide? By sword or dagger? What of the judge's verdict? Tajimaru's fate and the woman are unimportant. We can go through endless dissections and likelihoods, but all our speculation is based on unreliably biased accounts. Maybe we're not supposed to understand what took place, but I'll make a separate video exploring these mysteries. After all we've seen, what is Rashomon about? Rashomon is well known for its conflicting perspectives, and today, this type of story has become symbolic for that confusion. They even have a name for it, the Rashomon Effect. But this is not what Rashomon is about. With so much attention paid to the style of delivery, we lose focus on the message. From his book, something like an autobiography, Akira Kurosawa recounts the point of Rashomon. In summary, when questioned by three assistant directors about the meaning of the script, Kurosawa responded, Human beings are unable to be honest with themselves. They cannot talk about themselves without embellishing. The kind who cannot survive without lies to make them feel they are better people than they really are. He goes on about the sin of egoism the difficulty of redemption, and the impossibility of understanding the human heart. Of course, true to splitting fashion, two of the assistant directors nodded their head in understanding, and one left, angry and unconvinced. In the same spirit, after its release, despite winning greater praise internationally, Rashomon only received mixed reviews from Japanese critics. Rashomon isn't only about the confusion of conflicting viewpoints. It's mainly about the selfishness that lies in each of us, the deceptiveness we present to ourselves and others in order to survive to our own advantage in this dog-eat-dog -dog world. It's a pessimistic outlook, the loss of faith and goodness in humanity. But just around the corner, there is still rebirth, hope, and redemption to be found in the human soul. To me, the latter sounds like a cheap tack onto the philosophy and the spirit of the story, but there it is. The only people who haven't lied appears to be the commoner and the priest, whose presence symbolized the contrast between hope and jaded cynicism. If I have any criticism, it's that after endless examples of selfish lies, we end on a note of underdeveloped optimism. So that's what happened, I say. Everything I've gone over is the absolute truth, the definitive explanation of events. I was there, I tell you. Believe me, I've experienced it, lived it, breathed it. Watch it for yourself. It'll be exactly as I described. Rashomon, one of the greatest Asian movies of all time! <laughs> Though if you ask someone else, they just might say they saw something entirely different. I'm the Asian film fanatic. If you like and subscribe, I'll adopt your baby.